Hey, welcome back to the Dave Kittle Show. Today we have a uh, chiropractor and awesome uh, professional, Kieran Collins. We're going to be discussing cash pay recurring revenue models for treating pain using a new medical device. And we're going to get into all of that, how uh, Kieran reached out to me, who he treats, what he's, what device he's using, uh, the outcomes, the, the payment model, the examples that you could potentially implement in your practice. But before we get into that, Dr. Kieran Collins, welcome on the show. How are you, Dave? Good to talk to you. I appreciate your time. Uh, you reached out to me, I don't know, many months ago on LinkedIn. Yes. And, uh, you know, the, we get we get a lot of random, weird, you know, uh, contacts over LinkedIn, sometimes spam or just um, something uh, not worth our time. This was originally, I was, I was unsure. It was like you were talking about some device and we'll get into that. But long story short, I'm glad that you uh, connected with me. We're going to get into this device because I've used it with my physical therapy patients and clients. I've used it on my family members, myself. And so I feel and see the difference. And my patients and clients have felt the difference. Let's get into yourself, your background, and a little bit more about this device. So I've been a chiropractor for over 20 years. and But during the course of being a chiropractor, I've done other things, including what's called neuromodulation. And neuromodulation is what we're going to talk about today. But prior to Stimpod, I worked with another company where I taught medical doctors to implant uh, peripheral nerve stimulators in under the skin. And I used to teach these guys. And I would go into the OR and we'd be like, all right, a neuro neuropathy here. We're going to put this little mini spinal cord stimulator under the skin. And then there was a Bluetooth technology. It was a, it was a cool idea. But it actually, the, the whole thing fizzled out. So with the neuromodulation, traditional neuromodulation, it basically puts a vibrational sense on the nerve. So when you vibrate a nerve, it decreases or suppresses pain. So this woman that I knew, I was working with two neurosurgeons. She comes up to me. She goes, you're a good doctor. I have this device right here, StimPod, right? And she goes, this thing treats nerves acute and chronic pain and i was like she's like i want you to use it and tell me what you think and i was like all right that sounds like complete nonsense and i'll use it because i had all those patients i had failed neck patients failed back sur back surgery patients i had every patient under the sun so i was like all right great i'll try it we'll see how much this is nonsense right because i never heard of anything that can treat nerves so let alone heal nerves. So the first patients that I treated were patients that had an ACDF. So they have a cervical fusion. And 60% of those people have burning hands on a daily basis when they sleep. So I treated their carpal tunnel. I know all the nerves. I treat their carpal tunnel, treat their carpal tunnel. Fine. These people would come running back. They could sleep for three days with one treatment. Their hands didn't burn. And I was like, well, that's amazing. Right. So then I'm going to start treating all these other different things. So I started treating Bell back. I had a guy who had a pedicle screw put on his sciatic nerve. And he got a revision a month later. So he had drop foot and burning in his leg. Treated this guy. He slept for two days. And still, I had no idea what I was doing. I was like making it up on my own. I didn't talk to the company. There are no directions. I was like, all right, but I did work with neuromodulation before. So I'm like, all right, I, I got a good idea. So I started doing it and it's working for the fell back. They're like, I feel better. I'm treating sciatic nerve. I'm treating whatever. So then I start treating all peripheral pain. So I have a whole bunch of geriatric population with knee pain. I start treating one knee, start treating the other knee. People are like, I feel great. I don't want gel shots. It lasts for a month on this patient. I'm like, that's great. I have a whole bunch of, I had like four postal workers with burned out SI joints. As you know, this happens all the time. Put it on their SI joints, they come back. I was at work, I feel pain the same exact time. Everything's repetitive. I didn't feel the pain. And I was like, that's great. So we'll continue doing this, right? So the final test was I have this obese chef who cooks for a, a nursing home. And she has this huge valgus deformity in her leg. It's like, I've got knee pain right here. And I'm like, oh my God. I was like, of course you got knee pain, right? We put it on her knee pain right there. She has no knee pain. 
for like four days. And I was like, that is the craziest thing in the world. It's like gross deformity. She's got internal damage. She's huge. Everything's stretched out in the wrong direction and we're getting results. So at this point, I call up the company and I'm like, you guys made an awesome thing. And I was like, I want to help you. So I was like, I'll try to get it to as many people as possible. After that, at some point, I reached out to you. I reached out to everyone under the sun. I showed it to everyone in New Jersey. I showed, so here's the cash based thing. I showed it to every major group, which you know the names of all the major groups. They're in New York, they're in New Jersey, right? I show it to them. I go to this one place that has 60 clinics. I'm like, give me eight patients that you can't do anything with. I'll treat them all. Go in there, treat all the patients. Like one guy was an MMA fighter. He had a cervical issue. He had a knee issue. Another guy had um, some, well, this other woman had some sort of nerve entrapment in her foot. I treat that. So I go down the list. I treat everybody. Everybody loves it. They come to me the next day. They're like, Karen, it's great. Can't buy it. And I'm like, what's up? Because it works. The problem is it works. And the goal in traditional PT is not, it's to keep the cycle flowing, keep that wheel moving. But if you want a result, this thing is going to give you a result. And I want results. I want to help my patients. So I do this all the time, regardless. Like this thing will help differentiate any individual physical therapist by a long shot, as you know. Like, tell me the story, tell the story about your hand patient. And I'll tell you a crazier story about one of my hands. I'm a chiropractor, I don't treat hands, ever, never. You tell me your story. Yeah, absolutely. So you reached out to me last year. I used it with a, a ton of different patients and clients. And then this patient I was seeing with uh, chronic left wrist pain, um, he had an old, like, a 50 year old, 55 year old injury where he fell off a horse 50 or 55 years ago. So there was like already um, callus formation on the bone. The bone had apparently split and then he re aggravated it about eight months ago, prior, so sometime last year, prior before he had uh, uh, contacted me and, and found our services online. Uh, and so for him, it was local left sided wrist pain. It was on the owner's side. So he had. Uh, wrist pain with pretty much every movement, uh, obviously opening up doorknobs, opening and closing doors, lifting and carrying groceries or a briefcase, um, anything fine motor or grasping uh, this individual I had pain with. Since I had the device and I, it's so small, right? So I'll hold it up again because what we do is we travel to our patients and clients. So it's a very, very small light device. And so it's in my bag for me to travel around when I'm seeing some patients, even though I'm trying to get out of patient care, but that's another story. So this guy with the left-sided uh, wrist pain and swelling, he felt it was something like 50% pain relief in one 10 minute session. Now, anyone that's watching or listening, I know that sounds ridiculous. I know that, you know, sometimes we get lucky maybe with treatment and sometimes we know it takes a lot more time to lower someone's symptoms and then, you know, rebuild them back up with strength and mobility and, uh, you know, drills and exercises and th things like that. But this uh, patient uh, wrote me a, wrote me a letter to his hand surgeon at NYU. He was able to avoid hand surgery, uh, wrist surgery, uh, and the, the NYU, uh, the chief of hand surgery was very happy to, to hear all this. So this ind individual, this patient felt about 50% pain relief from one 10 minute session. We do 10 minutes locally, I think we can go into a little bit more of like the, you know, location and how we're treating things. But for, for me, it was just like, okay, it was like near the, the owner styloid uh, of the lateral wrist. And I would just move it around every two or three minutes, which is what, you know, one thing that Kieran has taught me among many things. And um, then we continue to do this uh, 10 minute stim pod treatment at the beginning of every visit. And then sometimes if he was feeling more achy or more sore, maybe we would do a second um, batch of 10 minutes. So maybe we would do 20 minutes. All of our visits are 60 minutes, right? So I'm doing, I'm doing a stim pod in the beginning of the visit. Then I'm doing hands, hands-on manual therapy. So I'm doing either 
uh, passive or active assisted nerve glides. I'm doing wrist joint mobilization. Um, we're looking at his brachial radialis. We're looking at muscles and joints above and below the issue. Then we're doing strengthening or mobility, some exercises. We're doing some loading into the, the wrist. And for me, it was dramatic for, for this guy to see like his, his eyes like popping out of his head in regards to the relief that he felt after the first session. But then I want you to talk about how people or how patients might be skeptical and other practice owners and, and, and physical therapists listening are certainly going to be skeptical about how long does the relief last. And so for this patient, he loved the first treatment so much. He's like, he's like, I want you to come. I want you to treat me every like, like two or three times a week. All right, great. So like what I found, and, I, and you can certainly fill in the gaps here, Karen, but what I found is every time I was treating that same person, like it wasn't completely like 100% pain relief after just 10 minutes, that would be crazy. In some cases, maybe lucky, but he was getting a, a, a multitude of effects with follow-up and subsequent visits. So he got X amount of relief from the first visit and some of that relief carried into the next visit. And then he got some, a little bit more relief from the second or third and the, and the eighth and the 10th visit. So over time, his, uh, his pain dramatically decreased. And he got to the point where when he wrote that letter to the hand surgeon at NYU, who was happy to hear that he progressed with conservative treatment, he wrote in the letter about me, my name, the stim pod, my practice concierge pain relief, and also said that he was 90% better. So that's the patient that's, the, you know, and ultimately it's the, <laughs> the patient is what, you know, rules here. So like whatever they say that they're feeling better, if they're saying they're 90% better then they're 90% better. So, um, what are your what are your thoughts or, or takeaways from from that as like an anecdotal uh, story that I've used? So I mean, I agree with you. There's a residual compound effect of the therapy. So you're basically there. There are two components when you're using a stem pod. You could be nociceptive nerve fibers and basically turning those off for a given amount of time. All right. So like, um, so like, say I treat this guy right now, Oscar. He had a scope done on his shoulder, right? And he's got three little holes. I treated him two days after the, the surgery just to shut down those nociceptive nerve fibers that are expressing pain to his brain. But then you that just has to be retrained to just keep it off. He's doing great. But like when you're training a nerve, when you're treating something like a neuropathy, right, which we can do on with Stimpod. So Stimpod is actually a magnetic wave of energy that treats nerves directly. So as you know, like if I'm going to be treating my, my radial nerve, I'm going to put the stim pod right here. And then you're going to see fasciculation of my and, thumb. And, and by the way, if you're, if you're listening on iTunes or Spotify, you should definitely jump over to the YouTube Dave Kittle show for this episode. Cause we're good. Go you're going to, you're going to point as to, so it's kind of like a, a stylus as part of the stim pod that's connected to the, the device, the stim pod. And so you, we can direct the treatment in a very specific location, including between fingers and hands and wrists and, and other places that so, you can't usually treat or you can't usually so get I'm to. Gonna, I'll, I'll show you right now. I'll treat my own ulnar nerve. And this is the difference between all of the therapies and what Stimpod does. So and like, also, also, while you're setting that up, like some patients or clients that I've had, they're like, oh, I've tried TENS or I've tried, you know, whatever. It's to I know it's totally different. It feels different for me. Um, there's physical therapists and practice owners out there that like don't, you know, we, a lot of them don't do ultrasound anymore, just ultrasound like treatment. Uh, and then also with stim and heat and ice or whatever. So if you have a patient okay. or client or a practice owner, what, what do you say to them if they're like, oh yeah, like stim, like we don't do stim. Like we don't do this, this is not, this is not stim based upon the gate theory. This is pulse radio frequency. It's a completely different thing. It's attenuating nerves directly with a magnetic wave of energy. It's nothing to do. With stim, it might look like the box might look like stim, but mm -hmm. the waveform is nothing like muscle stim. And you're going to see the effect right now. So it's like basically, if I put this, you see my hand jumping? Yep. If you could just maybe turn it up a little bit more, I, I see just, the yeah, circulation. Jack it up. So, so you... <laughs> jack, jack it up for the, for the demonstration. Oh my God. Look there at my. Go. There you go. So this is the pulse. And the stylus, I'm not even on the radial nerve. And with the ulnar nerve, it break, it arcs and it does everything, as you know. 
it right. that's why the that's why the thumb's moving even though you're on yeah. the owner's side yeah but i'm feeling it all over the place <laughs> obviously i'm treating nerves right now we're not not treating nerves so when i say we treat nerves we're going to treat the sciatic nerve and i'm going to tell you dave i want you to feel this running down the leg to the bottom of your foot and we're going to treat your nerves and train those nerves to function normally so getting to the title of this so we're talking about cash based opportunities for physical therapists I just started a program, like I've been treating diabetic neuropathy for a long time. And I finally started advertising for it and I'm treating it. So I'm charging a thousand dollars for the treatment. It should be done. Uh, average patient is six visits, but I'm going to give them a holdover. So if they need to be tuned up again in the future, um, they'll have a little bit of a credit. But these therapies are all being done by the patient. I direct them and I'll, I'll, I'll set the device and I'll get on the nerve. And if a patient, I'll basically, I, I have a, a holder that treats the nerve on the back of their leg. And then they treat the nerve on the dorsum of their foot. So I'll show you with my phone. Um, this is the app that I use, which is the essential anatomy number five. And so here's the app, but literally, as I showed you, I show the patient, I want you to put it directly onto that little dot. So they're gonna hunt and peck. And I'll be saying, like, all right, Dave, I want you to feel this therapy going from the top of your foot underneath your toes. And they're gonna hold it. They're like, all right, Kieran, I feel that. And I was like, all right, set the level. I set the level and I'm, I'll be back. Just hold it here for five minutes. And then that therapy is like the complete game changer to cover the essential problem was the inability to feel the bottom of their feet. And it works every time. So like, that's the coolest thing where people say they can treat diabetic neuropathy. People might say it, but I know that I'm going to do it. So that's the difference. I have complete confidence in my ability to treat them regardless one way or the other. The only time if the patients are, uh, they're diabetic and their insulin levels are so unstable, I don't even want them to be my patient. Like I had a guy who came into me, wanted me to treat him. And he's like, he was like an obese guy. And I'm like, I'm not treating you. I was like, you need to lose 50 pounds. Come back and lose 50 pounds. The guy actually lost 40 pounds and showed back, showed up back to the office a month later. And I'm like, all right, we can treat you now and we'll be successful. So that's one thing. I treat the diabetic neuropathy. I also treat failed neck and failed back and fibromyalgia. Those are all the exact same treatments. And that is with vagal stimulation in the ear. And that's creating a vagal tone. So within the vagus nerve, there's that's your sympathetic nervous system. There's something called your hypercholagenic anti-inflammatory pathway. You can increase the body's ability to activate this pathway to decrease pain and inflammation uh, naturally. I know you did this with your mother-in-law and just talk about her doing it with the vagal stimulation on her own. Yeah, sure. So actually, because I have AirPods in, can you just show where you would put the the stylus for some mm -hmm. of the and also and also there there's a ground pad that you would put where like just for just for education purposes it could be you could put it anywhere. on your trap on your trap. Yeah. It's so if, if you if you're watching now on the on YouTube on the video, just move your hand a little bit, Kieran. So this the the styloid here would go in this upper ear part. Uh, is that like a, that's like above the external auditory meatus or whatever the anatomy it's, is? It's called the simba concha. It's, it's, it's basically, I teach everybody exactly where it is. Yeah. And yeah. everybody through how to do these treatments. Yeah. So I took the, the first device you sent me originally, um, the first Stimpod, um, I took it down to, uh, to Florida for that family member. And, um, She's had a history of like car accidents and um, neck whiplash and fibromyalgia and, you know, body aches and a whole, all that. So she had tried the first day. Uh, I think it was just like five minutes. And I was like, just five minutes, really light. It should be again, you you'll train anyone that reaches out to us to potentially yeah. do this, you know, this do dollar trial if this, of this device, if they want to. Five minutes, really tap, like light tapping sensation. It should not be a pinchy or sharp sensation. I had I had her put it in the, the upper part of her left ear. She felt comfortable with it for five minutes. And she, after like minutes after the 
the five minutes after the treatment of just doing it for five minutes, she felt a little less body tension. This was her words, a little less neck tension, a little more relaxed. She felt a little, um, she felt a little less body aches in general. So I was like, wow, that's cool. Like no, you know, no side effects, no drugs, no pills, no, no, you know, no Voltaren gel, whatever, like awesome. Um, and then the next day, another five to seven minutes. And then the following day, another five to seven minutes at the same uh, milliamps, like the same intensity, again, just like a tapping sensation, not sharp, um, nothing that's going to, you know, uh, irritate somebody. And, um, and each time she did it, like she was feeling better from it. So I was like, great. I was like, you know, let me, uh, let me get you one of these devices from, from, uh, from Kieran and the company. And, you know, got her device and sent it to Florida and, and she's able to self treat herself, you know, like self treatment on her own. She's also um, a healthcare provider. So she understands like, you know, a lot of uh, fundamentals in terms of just uh, compliance and setup and all that. And so she, she's loved it. And then the same type of thing, like with my other clients where I'm bringing it to them, it's, some people have that perception of like, oh, it's just tens or it's just stim or I tried that before. And I'm like, no, no, no. Like this is a, you know, tens is like, yeah, you could buy for $50 on Amazon or something. Um, but this is like a medical device. It's, it's you know, a, a little more expensive, fairly more expensive, um, gets uh, gets results for sure. And um, why, why don't we touch on the, so we talked about local pain. So if you had the pain, the patient with knee pain, um, you'll just put it right on the location of pain. Uh, if someone has a joint pain, a muscle strain, you can put it right on the, the so the styloid would go right on the, if there was upper trap strain right yeah. there. So, I mean, you can go anywhere. Like, like plantar fasciitis is a nightmare, right? This thing is hands down the best thing that you could ever use for plantar fasciitis. And it works immediately. Like, like I had a, I'm working with a lot of different uh, groups. There's a, a humongous, humongous national organization where they have Stimpod and they're going to use it as part of their platform. This woman was like, my plantar fascias are destroyed from running. Right. So I was going to, I was going to a wedding and I knew I had to wear high heels and I was not going to make it. She's like, I treated both of my feet before it went. She's like, I danced all night. My feet still don't hurt. And it was like two days after that I saw her in the city. And she was like, I would have never made it through that wedding if I didn't use a stim pod on my feet. So it's like, I can't, like inherently, I'm a chiropractor. I don't even mess with people's feet. Um, but you put this on their feet, right on the, scent, the site of pain, it's going to go away. Like it's going to break through and then the pain's going to dissipate. It's going to shut down those loops of pain that keep on cycling. So like, that's something with like, you take like, you're you, you like, so like you're an athlete, you play baseball, right? Yep. And I've played a bunch of sports. So like I treat people, I play pickleball. I played a ton today. So like they'll have tennis elbow, put it directly on the tennis elbow. So I, I, I treated two patients like a week ago or two people I play with. One was good. They both felt immediate relief. The second one has a torn ligament. He still felt relief, but he's like, I'm going to need surgery because he got an MRI after we treated him. And it's like, all right, so I can't fix a torn ligament, but we did shut down the pain and the other person's perfectly fine because it was inflammation of the tendon and that's it. So it helps. It can help basically every single patient that you're going to experience regardless. Like, like, you told me you treated yourself prophylactically after pitching. And I was like, that's the smartest thing. Yep. Like just get rid of all the lactic acid and the nonsense that you know is coming and just put it on there and then you'll be fine. I actually, so yeah, because um, with, with treating my shoulder, what I did, I don't, I don't know if I got this from you or not, but I found a spot right above my clavicle, right at the like brachial plexus before it splits apart right above, right, right above the clavicle. So what I'll do is, and if, again, if you're watching the YouTube, so I would have on this, this part would be the ground pad. So this ground pad, I could stick on my upper trap, my shoulder, my deltoid, whatever. I take the treatment styloid or the pen here, 
and I would just find right above my right above my clavicle where there's a little bit of a, a the, the 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 cluster right or the right of right above there for the brachial plexus and then so I'm holding it with my opposite arm obviously and then I'm feeling sensation in the ulnar and median nerve and maybe a little bit of radial and I'm getting some like down my whole arm um positive like positive responses so either some uh stimulation type sensation or some of the the twitching or the fasciculations of either brachial radialis or some of my flexors uh of my wrist or or my wrist was actually moving or, or my fingers were moving all from holding this right above right about there where i can show yeah. you here right above i know where it is there <laughs> so but more for the yeah more for the video but um so what that did like it i don't know it felt like i was getting like almost the way that now these uh, pneumatic compression boots are popular on like Instagram and TikTok and stuff and physical therapists use the, the Norma Tech compression boots or, you know, um, air relax or things like that. So it's like, for me, it was just like, yeah, it's like a recovery thing. And like my whole hand and arm was like twitching comfortably. And that is like, I, I use now the StimPod for, you know, aches and pains and areas where they're kind of in weird spots. And I'll try some you know, mobility drills or some exercises or things like that. But then there's always, there's always something that with baseball and, you know, something pops up for me where it's um, a little bit of, a, of an ache or pain or, or, or an irritation or something like that. And yeah, I just, I use that and I might have to use the stim pod for one or two or three nights or something like that on that particular area. Um, and then it, then I forget about it you know, then I just continue with my daily exercise with, you know, weights and cardio and, you know, things like that. So, um, yeah. Let's cycle back to, I'll, I'll tell you all the things that I get cash for. All right. Sure. I get, um, referrals from one neurologist so far for Bell's palsy, corner syndrome, trigeminal neuralgia, anything that's weird and facial, he automatically sends me for whatever reason. He's like, go to Dr. Collins, got my card. He just hands it out. He knows that he's not going to be able to treat it with any medication. And then I said to him, basically, these are the other things that I treat. And if someone's not responding to medication, just have them think about me just coming to treat with me for a little bit. And I, when he refers me a patient, I charge $100 a session for that. I've had people come from Maryland. I've had people come from upstate New York. I've had people drive two and a half hours from Pennsylvania, and those were all for Bell's palsy. And so really quick, you say $100 per session, but what you taught me is like usually it's just a 10 minute treatment. So a yeah. patient, so for the PTs, practice owners, therapists listening, you charge $100 for the 10 minutes, or do they get like how many minutes approximately for this? So, I mean, like, like for the Bell's palsy, it's, I look at, so, it's basically I'm going to treat whatever is deficient in their face. If it's four different areas, four different nerves, I'll treat all four. And the patient's, again, doing the treatment because they know when you put this thing on your face, it's going to be the sweet spot that is like they're going to feel it and be like, oh, that's it. Exactly it. And then like um, I have TikToks. It's just my name, Dr. Kieran Collins. You'll see a bunch of different TikToks for Bell's palsy and different stuff. So I had a guy who couldn't blink and we put it basically on the nerves that's innervating his eye. He can immediately blink after, like he could close his eye where he couldn't close his eye for like six weeks. Um, so you can, I have, I'll spend the time with the patient. It could be 20 minutes, but I'm just having them hold it. I'll be like, I'll come back and I treat somebody else. And I walk back in the room and I'm like, all right, let's see where we are with the timer. We have to move it around a little bit. We'll move it. I don't really care. They have the time they drove. They took the effort to come see me. I'd be happy to treat them. So I treat, again, I treat failed neck. I treat failed back and I treat fibromyalgia. Those are all just vagal stimulation. Those are repeat customers. Like they come in, in the beginning, it's twice a week, but I charge them a hundred bucks just because I feel bad for all these people because they're basically disabled as a result of their disabilities. Um, and the fibromyalgia, same thing. But in the future, when I'm treating them once a week, I still charge them a hundred dollars. And it's usually the treatment protocol is twice a week for two weeks, once the third week. And we're going to see if we're going to try to titrate them 
down and out. So I have people that I see like every six weeks and they're still good. Their vagal tone remains the same and they're happy. So that's, that's vagal stimulation. I treat female urinary incontinence and that's I, one treatment's $500. And if I have to do it again in the future, I give them credit, you know, and that's purely a word of mouth thing because it's such a, like, I've treated over a half a dozen women who gave childbirth, had childbirth, multiple kids. They would cough, laugh, or sneeze, and then they would pee themselves. And and, 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 and you you'll use the Essential Anatomy app because you you showed me at least the image or or some video or something of the the nerves above the is it above the pubic bone or something like you're not doing you're obviously not doing anything. No, 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 no. I'm nowhere I'm nowhere near that. So what I actually yeah. the result is I stole neuromodulation from the medical community. They actually put a spinal cord stimulator in S3 in your sacrum. And then they put a battery pack above your butt for people who wear diapers, right? So I'm like, all right, that's cool. I can do that. So I bought an extra long round pad like this big from Amazon with the, the nipple right in the middle. And I stuck it across S3. So the patients aren't uncomfortable. S3 is right above your crack, you know, just put it across. And then I'm treating the posterior tibial nerve in the back of the leg above the knee. And what actually happens is you feel the therapy going distally, but the therapy goes up also. And it actually goes up into the plexus. It goes into the lumbar plexus. And then it'll, it'll fine tune whatever uh, nerves need to be tuned up. Just the same way you felt the, pain, the therapy going distally. The only reason I found that out is I treat multiple sclerosis, which sounds completely insane. But if these, if your patrons uh, watch my TikTok, you'll see A to Z, a woman being treated. And I treated another MS patient and she wanted to lift her legs. She couldn't lift her legs. So I was treating the femoral nerve in her thigh. And she wasn't wearing the right pants. She was wearing jean shorts and I couldn't get up there. We couldn't get up into the groin. So I'm treating in the middle of her thigh, right? And she's, all right, she goes, all right, doc, I feel it going down the front of my leg. All right, hold it there for five minutes. Like two minutes in, she goes, doc, I feel this going into my spine, down the back of my leg, down my leg to my big toe. And I'm like, And the, wow. the, 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 tre the treatment stylist was where and the ground pad was where? The ground pad was nowhere near. She was treating her anterior thigh. So the therapy went down the anterior portion of her leg, but it went back up, hit her lumbar plexus, decided that S1 needed to be treated and treated S1. And I was like, that's amazing. And like, they ended up buying a stim pod themselves just because she has MS and she has to be tuned up regularly, a whole bunch of different nerves to make her function better. So it increases the tone in them, it increases the tone of those nerves in the women with urinary incontinence with a leaking bladder. Like if you have to get tuned up again, no big deal, but it's literally one visit. I've had patients last as long as six months without having to be tuned up, but they're like, doc, can I come back? You have credit, yes. And all that treatment is, is 10 minutes. And it's like literally post posterior tibial nerves, ground pad never moves. And then those people can hold the pain. And it's like, Again, that's an amazing thing. I mean, it's a different thing for people to treat when you couldn't treat that before. What about uh, have your patients said or asked you like, does my insurance cover this? Why does or why does my insurance cover this? I this is I, I don't even address it. It's it's cash based. That's it. It's it, like are, is your whole practice out of pocket? Like even for no, like chiropractic no, care or no, no. There's plenty of stuff gets paid for by insurance, but like when they're coming specifically for the stim pod, you're gonna pay because this is separate and distinct, you know, and you're gonna get this treatment by me and whoever else is proximal to me. Like, like I have a guy who comes to me from the Bronx every week, religiously, hundred bucks here, doc. It's like, take it. He's like, like, you can help me walk. And he's driving from the Bronx to New Jersey. You know, that's not an easy drive. Right. You know, I'm driving to Brooklyn if it was easier enough to sit there and talk. <laughs> I'm not driving for two and a half hours on a Friday, right. you know? Right. But, like, once you understand the therapy, people will refer you more patients who are literally 
hopeless. Like I've treated like in one week, I treated, I treated a whole bunch of, of drop foot with sciaticas, but I got two referrals from other doctors, like said that was their family members. We treat them. And I was like, that's crazy, but they know that I'll use Stimpot on and I'll do like, I'll actually get a result. You know what I mean? Like they know they can't get a result. If you do anything else, you're not going to help them with their drop foot. You're not going to help them with their sciatica. You're not going to turn it off. Like we can literally turn it off. And like, if it has to be done a few times, it's done a few times, but the patient's not going to be, they're willing to pay for something that has an immediate result and it's not being treated 35 times. You know, like make it meaningful if you're being ca paid cash for your services. Sure. Amen. Right. Uh, what have we not covered? So we talked about your payment models, ways to charge out of pocket for this uh, recurring model. Like your the hundred dollars per is it a hundred dollars per week or hundred dollars per month? What were you saying about so, some of the recurring ideas? Just I charge a hundred dollars per week with the vagal stimulation no matter how many times they come, just because I have empathy for these people because they're all disabled, like failed neck and failed back. Your quality of life is a zero. Fibromyalgia, your quality of life is zero. You know, like you don't have a life. So like I'm giving them a break. That's it. So it's a lot of these patients are paying like physical, physical cash. Like you don't have their credit cards on file, charging them as if it's like a gym membership. Do you, or no, do you do some? No, no, they just pay on um, pay per service. Got it. You know, coming in, if I know you're coming in twice a week, I'm going to charge you still just a hundred bucks. If you come in twice a week, you know, whatever, it's still a hundred bucks for that week. But if it's, uh, but again, there are those services like the urinary incontinence, I charge $500 for one session because it's going to work. You know, the, you know, that's, that, that was just examples. Like, so for the diabetic neuropathy, we're charging a thousand dollars. And like generally it's six sessions, I'll get rid of the diabetic neuropathy, but they'll have a credit if they need to be tuned up in the future, which they probably will. So the diabetic neuropathy, I think you briefly mentioned, but if not, where are you putting the, the treatment stylus? That was the one on the that's fibular nerve or that was on the... That's on the posterior tibial nerve and then it's on the dorsum of your foot. So where the nerves are separating on the dorsum of your foot, they, they separate. Here, I'll show the picture again. Um, I'll show you both nerves that I treat with that. So like on the dorsum of the foot, it's literally right there. You can see those nerves that go under the feet. So we're going to hunt and peck until we find it. And we'll say, all right, Dave, hold this here for five minutes. And then again, but then I'm treating... But, but the, the patient is instructed when they feel it in a certain spot, they're going to say like, oh, that's it. Or they're, they're going to let you know that that is I want you, symptoms. I want what? you to I want you to feel this going underneath your foot. And they're going to feel the therapy going underneath the foot from the dorsum of the foot. So this is the nerve that I'm treating in the back of the leg. And this is your posterior tibial nerve where it breaks off. And on a bigger version, it's like that. And they're going to say, all right, Dave, I want you to feel this running down your leg underneath your foot. The thing with diabetics, with the neuropathy, it's a, it's a, ner it's a, it's a nerve issue. It's not just a, a pinch nerve. There's dysfunction within the nerve. So we have to train that nerve to function normally, completely along the course of that nerve. And we can do that. So like some patients will feel it automatically going straight down. Some people will feel it going halfway down to their calf, and then that'll be it. But then on the proximal visit, it'll go down further and then it'll go down further. And then the goal is to get it underneath the foot. So we might be doing all, all the sessions on the patient who is really dysfunctional versus someone who's more functional. I mean, it's going to work like snap, but it's still all the same, same payment. Right. Got it. And so again, just to recap, you get the treatment stylus, you put it right on local pain. So if someone has a muscle strain, joint pain, discomfort, you put the stylus right on the area of pain as one option for orthopedic yep. musculoskeletal pain. Uh, second option is in the upper ear for vagus nerve stimulation. Uh, you didn't even cover, I know you, we don't want to go too far in the weeds here, but basically taking someone from, uh, remind me again, from a parasympathetic state to a sympathetic state. Is that it? No, it's sympathetic to parasympathetic. From sympathetic to parasympathetic. Uh, so if someone is, whether it's fibromyalgia, chronic pain, 
um, Parkinson's, MS. There, there's actually, I, I pulled up a bunch of research that I sent to one of my patients that has Parkinson's, and there's a bunch of good research on vagal nerve simulation, minimizing or decreasing episodes of freezing. So freezing of gait for someone with Parkinson's when they're trying to enter an elevator or go through some transition like a doorway. Well, that's all you. You got that patient. I haven't, uh, I haven't had the Parkinson. I haven't had Parkinson's. I played pickleball with the guy who has Parkinson's, but um, try it so, out. So those are the, those are the first two, and then the third way of treating is finding the nerve and treating along the nerve path. Which um, even for me, I had to get the essential anatomy app that you were just showing and displaying. Like I had to, you know, I, I refresh myself on all the nerve locations and the nerve and pathways. There's, and all that there's no way they had to. Yeah, no, it's yeah. like there's no way you can know all that. So I don't know all that stuff. I don't. I mean, like I know where all the nerves are now, but being nice, if you've never treated a nerve, you're not going to be able to identify where everything is. But so all I do is I use that app, and then I hunt and peck, and I give the patient the direction of where I want you to feel the therapy going. And then once you get that, then you know you're on the right nerve, and that's it. And so basically, like I said, 95% of the time, patients are doing that treatment themselves. I'm moving it around until I find it because like, they're going to know when it's on the right stop, spot better than I do. And 100% of the time when people are treating pain, like no susceptible pain, whether it's your knee, your ankle, your foot, say, Dave, I don't know where your pain is. You do. Just put it, move it around. Find that spot and put it on it. That's it. And it works like a magic eraser for your pain like that. And yeah. because you never know where your pain is. Even though they might feel like I'm not being treated well, the doctor's not doing it, but no one wants to rub around ultrasound doing this nonsense. Right. You know, the most monotonous stuff in the world. But with this, they, they'll do it and they're going to get immediate pain relief. Right. Uh, so, and if there are any therapists or practice owners that are interested in this, um, you guys can reach out to me. We have, Kieran's been nice enough to actually help set up a $1 trial where you actually can get uh, video coaching from him. So the offer, you have to reach out to me, you have to send me a message, uh, email Dave at Concierge Pain Relief. It'll also be um, Dave at ConciergePainRelief.com. It'll be at the end of the uh, recording, the episode here and in the show notes. If you want, reach out to me on LinkedIn or send me an email or find me somewhere on the internet and uh, let me know if you're interested. And you can, for $1, you can get a StimPod device shipped to you or to your practice. Try it out for two weeks. In that two weeks, there'll be some coaching support, uh, either Kieran or would it be always you or someone on your team? I'll, I'll do it. I'll so do you'll, it. You, what, you, what, you, what you did with... What, and you'll do the same thing, what you did with me originally. You sent me this device. I let you know when I got it in the mail. Uh, we jumped on a FaceTime call. You briefly, you know, you helped me in two minutes uh, with like here, like just treat local pain. So any pain, any patient, like we're evaluating and treating patients. So any patient that has an ache or pain, um, here's where you can put the ground pad. Here's where you put the treatment stylus. Start with local pain. And then... The, the inner ear for vagus nerve stimulation. If you have someone with fibromyalgia, complex regional pain syndrome, RSD, um, history of whiplash, right? Back pain, neck pain, things like that. Um, those, those are the two simplest ones to start with. And then you'd have to maybe refresh yourself with the essential anatomy app. You could, sciatica, I, I did with a buddy, um, a physician friend of mine, and with his sciatica was right above like you showed me right above where it splits in the the posterior uh hamstring you just got to find it and then you know get that therapy going down the rest of the leg in a comfortable way but um if you guys are interested totally uh feel free if you'd like to reach out to me and we could potentially get you set up for a one dollar trial we want to make it like low risk as possible um get your card on file for a buck and i'll send you the link if you're interested Kieran and his team will ship you a device. You try it out for two weeks. If you don't like it, you send the device back and you don't have to pay anything. And if you get similar results that we've gotten, then I think the cost of this, it is more, I will I will say this. If if it blows you away, the cost is going to be of the device. It's not just a couple hundred dollars, but it's also not like some of these other devices that are like 20,000, 50,000. Yeah, Shockwave, like, 
Um, some of these are you know, like $70,000 devices. It's not even close to that. Um, but it is also not a $50 <laughs> TENS unit. No. So uh, it's, somewhere, it's somewhere in the middle. But um, my patients and clients have loved it. I've used it myself. Obviously, you in the audience, you know that I wouldn't um, have something on here that I didn't truly use and believe in. So uh, Dr. Kieran Collins, I appreciate your time and uh, any final uh, wrap up or a way for the audience to maybe reach out to you, either your practice or learn more about you on TikTok. I mean, we're working together through that. They can look at my TikToks. It's just Dr. Kieran Collins, K-I-E-R-A-N Collins. You can see a ton of different videos ranging from multiple sclerosis to just treating post-surgical pain and immediate, immediate pain relief. I mean, I wouldn't be doing this if this wasn't truly like I'm a huge advocate for people not taking drugs. Same. And yeah, that's where PTs and carters can actually agree on, right? No, 100%. And I work with PTs all the time. And it's like, I don't want to see the things happen to people that currently the current model always forces on everybody. They have no idea that they can be treated in another way that's not harmful. There's zero side effects with this. There's nothing. Yep. Yep. So think about a person who's got failed back. What are they going to be on? They're a mess. They're on opioids. They're depressed. They're not moving. You know, you're destroyed. I can make you 80 to 90% better doing vagal stimul stimulation and you can live your life and you're not on drugs. What could be better than that? You know, so I'm doing this to make a change within the healthcare system itself. I'm not doing it. I want everyone to experience something that can be done and not the current model because it's not a good one. Yeah, amen. Um, we're all together helping people get back to doing the things they wanna do and love to do uh, without injections, pain meds and surgery and those types of things should always be last resort. So that's uh, definitely why we're working together and uh, hopefully we can get this in front of more PTs and, um, and more patients really. All right, I appreciate your time. Thank you. Awesome, thank you, Kieran. Hey, it's Dave Kittle. Are you a healthcare business owner or physical therapy practice owner who is looking to figure out your succession plan or exit strategy? We might be able to help. And in fact, we may be interested in acquiring your practice. If you're interested, you can reach out to me. Shoot me an email at dave at conciergepainrelief.com. That's D-A-V-E at C O N C I E R G E painrelief.com or you can call me at any time 646 781 8884